carpets in the house all the time when she's cleaning them. And her favorite singer was King Cole. And uh, so I, I grew up listening to all of his music and that beautiful voice. And uh, she enrolled me in ballet when I was three years old. And then, of course, I began to be exposed to a lot of different music, Tchaikovsky and um, you know, all the great uh, ballet composers. Um, and uh, so I studied ballet from three until I was about 17. Um, started piano when I was 10. Um, and uh, the way I started that though, I begun, I was always wanted to be a performer. You know, I was always running around the house, putting on some sort of show or in the neighborhood. Uh, funny stories about my, uh, my, my cousin Nancy bringing me home crying, you know, one day, <laughs> we were in grade school, and my mom said, what happened? And she, Nancy said, she was preforming for the neighborhood and she fell off the ledge. <laughs> so, <you know. laughs> so anyway, um, I was a preformer. Um, but uh, then, um, but always I, I started singing in the church youth choir and my piano teacher uh, first heard my voice. I, I don't remember when, but he was also an organist uh, in a church in Barrington, Illinois, where I grew up. And so he started having me come and sing solos um, at the church. And I began taking um, voice lessons uh, when I was 16, which I think is a really good age to start uh, something like that, not before that, because uh, you know, you're still developing. And I, um, I don't even encourage you know, young children so much to study voice privately. To participate in a chorus or choir is a great thing because you know it helps them with their reading skills and their musical skills. Um, but then uh, I would go to the next town, which was Palatine, uh, Illinois, and study with a lady named Margaret Dianasotis. Uh, go to her house and take half hour lessons. And um, then, uh, then in high school, and this was during high school, uh, my huge inspiration was uh, my choral director, Philip Mark. Um, he encouraged me um, in every way. He was a wonderful, wonderful man. Uh, the students used to call him Uncle Phil. And uh, just an incredible human being and also a wonderful musician who picked really great repertoire for high schoolers to learn and, and perform. And um, he uh, helped and encouraged me to, then when I went on to the University of Illinois as a vocal performance major, which I really just didn't know what that was, but I found out. And uh, unfortunately, he, uh, he, uh, was killed in a car accident with his wife. Um, they both were killed, and their daughter survived. And um, that was when uh, I was in college that that happened. And it was just devastating for everyone. Um, but I was so encouraged that uh, two years ago they had a performing arts reunion at my high school, and they went back, and his daughters came. They were grown up now, of course, and married, and all of that. But um, says a lot for him and for what he did for that school. Um, and hence, I am a great uh, believer, supporter in what education and encouragement in education can inspire. Uh, it, when done the way he did that, it can inspire people to go on to be their best and to to strive to uh, to achieve what their inspirational teacher uh, believed they could do. Um, I'll never forget, uh, you know, with the, in the senior year, you go around and have everyone sign the yearbook, and he signed my yearbook. I read it later, and it said, uh, you know, let me know when you get to the Met, Uncle Phil. That time I didn't know if I even knew what the Met was, um, but before I stepped on that stage, uh, 
to make my debut as Mimi in La Boheme. I just took a glance upward and I said, well, Uncle Phil, I'm here. Thank you.